hello there and welcome to my workshop uh, I say that a little bit tongue-in-cheek because uh, this particular video uh, I was uncertain whether I was going to release it or not but I, I think it's important that everybody sort of uh, does understand that everything that you put into a laser um, doesn't always turn out the way you think it's going to. Now, I have done many 3D carvings on lasers and CNC routers, um, not very often getting a hitch. This particular time, I categorize it as an absolute disaster. <laughs> but I think, you know, all the information uh, of how to and the settings are absolutely 100% correct. Nothing wrong with the laser, it's absolutely perfect. It was my choice of material to put in the laser. Now, this was supposed to be a <laughs> 3D engraving of the Mona Lisa and it turned out absolutely horrible because and, and I, was, I think I might have mentioned right at the very beginning that I was a little bit unsure about the adhesive used between the layers uh, and that this was uh, a wood called banana wood so it's a composite uh, of I suppose banana tree wood and I have no idea what type of resin they used in between the, the layers there but as you can see the actual three and this is only four passes uh, it would have taken eight nine or even ten passes for me to get down ten millimeters deep um, you know and it would have got there okay but it would have put, put her in prison, behind bars, as you can see. Um, so, you know, I, I, I consider this as, a, you know, a total disaster. But, you know, the 3D engraving, even after four passes, is there. And it, had it not have been for these uh, adhesive layer bars, it would have turned out to be a beautiful piece and um, you know well worth doing but not in this material um, I, I dare say that if you could get one complete plank you know without uh, being joined um, it probably would have turned out really good but um, in this case no so anyway I'll put the video together and I'll put it up as a lesson of well this are, this is the uh, correct settings and uh, this is how to do it but not with this material so I hope you enjoy it and uh, well please like and subscribe <laughs> if you like it so okay here we go Hello there and welcome to another Thunder Laser tutorial. In today's video we're going to carry out a larger 3D cabin, much larger than the one we did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we're going to do one in some fairly hard wood actually. Um, this is a fairly exotic wood. It is uh, what well, was labelled banana wood. So I take it, it's from a banana tree and it is, it appears to be very hard wood. It's, um, it's sort of man-made, as in it's made up of several strips uh, of material that's bonded together. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the laser makes of it. Um, not sh quite sure what it's going to do 
whether it, uh, I mean, it should make a fairly good job of it actually. So uh, we're going to give it a try, but the main aim today is, if you remember on the last video we, we um, did some trolling of 3D carving, um, we found out that the usable focal length of the, the laser beam, in other words the usable part of the beam, was about 6 millimeters. After that it goes out of focus. So what I'm going to intend to do, because I, I intend to go a little bit further than that, how much further, not quite sure, uh, possibly about 8 millimeters, maybe, maybe even more. But what I'm going to have to do is um, start off in focus, then after I've done about four or five runs of you know entire runs because that's what you need to do uh, and what I'm going to do is drop the laser down or should we say refocus it back into the material layer that we're working with and then do another three four passes and see if we can get uh, seven eight nine millimeters of depth and um, I'll take it from there it's a little bit of experimentation, uh, um, you know, I haven't done that with this laser before uh, and it'd be interesting to uh, see what happens. Uh, all this has been done with the standard 2 inch lens uh, from Thunder Laser, which is a good old rounder actually. Okay, so we fired light burn up, so the first thing we're going to do is come here and import uh, from my desktop now I've got this in two formats I've got this in a bitmap and a JPEG uh, JPEG with a grayscale image will be fine here it comes um, so I'm just going to resize this first okay now there's a couple of adjustments that I need to do over here regarding uh, it's I, I normally use it on absolute coordinates but I'm going to change that and we're going to put current position and we're going to relocate the uh, origin to this top left hand corner and you'll notice that a, a little green box appears here so wherever I set the head of the uh, laser, the nozzle, uh, and set the datum, that is where the program then is going to start at that top corner there. But I've also got this set to start at the bottom and work back. That's preferable in a, in a job such as this. So the next thing we need to do is to set up the power and speed for this particular image. We're already set on grayscale. Now what I've found that works is if I take this up to 95% and 2% because I know at 2% the laser drops out, it won't fire at 2%. So what Lightburn is going to do is going to split the power setting from 95% to 2% into 255 gradients of power and it's going to be split up between absolute black down on this end of this scale to absolute white. So it's going to split the power rating up 255 different levels over that spectrum. Um, now, if you turn air assist off with a thunder laser, that means the laser will automatically put a low pressure blow in on, which is exactly what we want. 0.1 of a millimeter scan line or step over 
which is fine. You can't alter one without the other here, so you know you have to leave the, the DPI, which is uh, dots per inch, um, as that. If you change this, it's going to alter this figure, and you don't want to, you know, make this any less than that uh, because you'll you'll overburn it, and uh, that wouldn't be very nice either. Grayscale. There's nothing else to alter here. So we're going to say OK. If you notice, let's zoom into this. This is, this is a grey scale image. It's not a picture. Uh, it is a scanned 3D image which is saved in different levels of white to black, giving the three-dimensional effect, or translating the three-dimensional image to something that a laser or a CNC router can understand. Okay, so I'm going to fire the laser up, and we will send this into the laser. So I've set up a piece of material now between the sensors because I'm going to bring the head over and automatically set the uh, focus. Okay, so now I've set the focus, I can bring this into a, the area where I want to carry the engraving out. I'm bringing it down the, down the front here, so I can you know, put the camera here and you know, give you a better view of what's going on. It actually just suddenly occurred to me that if I turn this around sideways uh, and Put the camera in here it'd be a lot easier so i've turned the picture around in light burn and uh, reset it and so i'll now set the datum over here and we'll see see what happens before i press the go button uh, a lot of you have asked me what this unit is here well this is a pure air filtration system uh, supplied by Thunder Laser. Um, now what a lot of people may not know is that a laser when it's cutting or etching or doing anything whatsoever onto material inside um, it's changing that solid material to a gas. Now Invariably, that resulting gas and particulates are poisonous. And what a lot of people do is just vent it straight outside. Now, you can do your own research on Google as to what those gases are, but they are highly toxic and in some cases highly carcinogenic so if you're in your workshop you're running a laser and you're venting it straight outside consider your kids playing it in your garden because it's a fact don't believe me do your research on Google if you have a laser and you are I would advise get a filtration system. You cannot just vent the gases coming out of a laser straight outside. Okay, so that's what that unit is there. So now we'll make a start.
I've just run that um, four times, and as you can see, the, you know, the 3D is coming out there, but the adhesive that has been used between the layers of uh, material there when they made the board up uh, is making it look as though the Mono Lisa is behind bars. Um, so really, you know, I, I, I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen, so now I found out. Um, so it's not a good idea to do a 3D in uh, you know, man-made uh, material, which isn't the fault of the laser. It's my fault. Not everything goes according to plan. All right, so um, I hope you've enjoyed that uh, video. Uh, let's face it, if you've got this far, uh, you probably did. And uh, you can have a laugh on me because I stuffed up. Okay, so don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, and if you really like what I'm doing with my videos, of which there are now 721 videos over two channels, um, you could consider becoming a patron to the channel. Patron information is below the channel. Patron information is below the video in the video description area. And uh, yes, please pop in and uh, have a look at some of my other videos or I'll probably see you next time. So it's bye for now.